Hello everyone. Come on into the garden. Today we're going to talk about container. Uh, <laughs> it's hard with great days. Today we're going to talk about container gardening and filling our containers with uh, the best soil. First, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss any great videos this season. And if you like the video, if you tap that like button, we'd really appreciate it. All right, so this container here, uh, I filled, I don't know how many weeks ago, uh, with some soil. And we're going to do a quick rewind so you can see me filling it and how I did it. Um, and usually, and this is a 30 gallon fabric pot um, that I filled with quite a bit of <laughs> soil when I first started this. And right now I've got some, I had a very, very hungry grasshopper come through here and hit some of these plants. Some um, were started in the bed and some were transplanted. These guys were actually transplanted from another location so they were protected. When I am filling my containers, whether they're this big, the 30 gallon or they're five gallon containers, uh, when I'm deciding on which soil to use, it really has to do with what I'm going to be growing in the bed itself. So in the video, you're going to see that I ended up mixing a couple of different soils. I used a raised, uh, a raised bed soil in here on the bottom, and then I used a potting mix on the top, a little bit fluffier. And part of the reason I did that is because I wanted to do some seed starting in the bed, and the potting mix is a little more conducive for starting seeds, but you'll get to see that. I also mixed in some other um, I mixed in some compost to chicken manure to give me a nice nitrogen kick in the beds. I put in some uh, worm castings, which I love and I'll talk about in the video. Now when you're putting your beds together, you could use just the raised bed soil or you could use just the potting soil uh, and you would grow just fine using your organic fertilizers and your compost. But I'm going to show you why and what I did in these beds because I was starting uh, seeds in them. All right, so we're gonna do a quick rewind and you're gonna see the process and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Bridget here. Welcome to uh, what's normally sunny Southern California. Today it's about 45 degrees, though I'm layered like it's maybe 10 degrees out. <laughs> but 45 is a little chilly for us. Uh, today I'm going to be filling up this uh, felt container. I, I like growing in felt bags, so we'll go over um, me layering and, and why I like felt. First, of course, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification so you don't miss any great Kellogg Garden content. Um, so, all right, let's get started. So growing in felt uh, pots, I really, really like it. Uh, if you're buying them online, they come in uh, gallons and I'll put on the video what this is. I don't know if it's a 20 gallon or a 40 gallon. Uh, it's about two feet in diameter and about 16 inches deep. So, um, and really most of your feeder roots are in about six inches, right? So it's it's a nice deep uh, container to grow in. Uh, part of why I like growing in felt is uh, lots of airflow, So you don't have to worry as much about the roots getting root bound. Now, on the other side of that, the, the negative or con uh, to growing in felt is that the soil dro dries out a little bit faster. So you really have to watch your watering. But for me, um, I really like growing in them. And because price wise and what you can do with them, um, it, it's a good one for me. Now, ignore this little, so they have some handles, makes it easy to move, which again, I really like that. Uh, but I have a chewer somewhere. So either I have a squirrel that's chewing this or I have a, a nice big Great Dane that's chewing this. So I'm not really sure. At first I thought they were breaking, but it's one on each one. And I really think it's, it's, it's a critter. All right, so today I'm going to put in here, so I've got some raised bed potting mix. Um, I also have some blue ribbon blend uh, potting mix. I really like, I really like that. So in the bottom, I normally put in my raised bed um, the particle size on the raised bed is a bit thicker. It's got more of the um, aged wood finds in it. And I like for the top to be a little bit fluffier. 
I also put in some of my granular um, organic fertilizer. So the tomato and veg, I sprinkle that in when I'm doing this. I've also got some composted chicken manure. I compost on my own, but I don't, uh, you could probably see it behind me, but I don't actually have a big compost yet. So I can't compost as much as I would like. Um, and then I also have worm castings. So I've set up some little uh, firma composting in my beds, but I don't worm compost enough. So I've got some worm castings in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and layer this up. Um, I'm excited because I have some uh, seedlings that I need to get in here, some sprouts that need to be get going. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. I find if I fold down the sides a little bit, it gives me a little bit more structure. And I could upend this bag. Well, it's heavy actually, um, but I've done it in the past. But part of, um, it's been in that bag for a while. It's a pretty big, it's a three cubic foot bag, uh, three cubic feet, um, almost 85 liters. Um, but I want to break up the soil a bit because sometimes it gets, you know, a little compacted in there, takes the shape of the bag. And if I pour too much in here at once, then I can't break it up. Now, sometimes you'll see some little, little bit of white on here. And really, that's just from all the moisture that's been in the bag. Once you let it kind of come out and breathe and dry out a little bit. You really don't have to worry about that. Now remember on something like this, if you want to calculate how much soil you're going to need, it's um, the diameter of this and then the depth of this, right? So your, your width and length are two feet and then your depth is 16 inches. So this is the um, granulated fertilizer. I'm gonna mix that in, get it down in here. It's slow release. So as your plants grow, kind of get them in there. Um, so as your plants grow, then the roots will come down and this will release more nutrients. Okay. So now on this, um, on this, the blue ribbon blend uh, for, the particle size is a lot smaller. It's a lot fluffier. Um, where the raised bed particle size is a little bit bigger. So uh, when you're starting, say, your seeds, uh, if you're going in ground, you know, you're, you're starting it in the beds, this type of soil um, I like starting my seeds in. Now I, I'll put the seeds on top and maybe sift some soil uh, over that or use a seed starter soil. Uh, because the particle size again is really small. The sifting I actually got from uh, San Diego Seed Company from Bridgette over there. Um, she <laughs> knows how to start seeds better than anybody I know. So, uh, and she sifts over her seeds. Um, so I like that. So I do that as well. Um, but I like this nice fluffy soil on the top. So we'll pour some more blue and blue, blue ribbon.
over that. Sometimes for me, soil is like being in the kitchen. I kind of just uh, make my own little recipes depending on what I want. Um, any of these soils would probably work just fine on their own with just a, a little bit of extra, you know, compost and things like that. But um, maybe it's because I, I just like to experiment, but I like mixing them. There's uh, another uh, product that Kellogg has, Harvest Supreme. I like that soil a lot too. Um, so I use that quite a bit and mix that in. See how fluffy this is? I really love playing in the soil. Um, as a kid, I liked, I didn't mind being dirty, so I guess that kind of fits in with the gardening, huh? Um, I have five younger brothers, so getting dirty, uh, part of it. As a, as a kid, one of my brothers thought he wanted to be a pig farmer because <laughs> he had a little friend who had his family um, had pigs and it and he was young he was around like four and he when we would go buy fields that smelled like manure he would he would do things like oh that smells so good and it used to crack me up but it's funny because yeah I think this bag here <laughs> the compost of manure smells good I know it's gonna be good for this garden so um, I used to make fun of my little brother, and now I kind of do the same thing. Isn't that funny? All right, this is the worm casting. Oh, I love these. <laughs> Absolutely love worm castings. Look how silky that is. Ooh, that looks good. Um, worm castings are, are great for your soil. They add minerals and nutrients. They also help with soil-borne diseases. Um, they help with pests. So I'm not ready to have a big worm composting um, station, but like I said, I did add some little, or I'm experimenting with some little um, worm composting actually in my beds, but being able to go buy some worm castings, uh, I love that because then I can supplement with that. So the compost, um, the manure, the compost of manure, and then I'm gonna add some more of my compost to the top uh, and then I'll put mulch over this as well. First I'll put in some of my young starts, kind of get them going and then uh, I will then pop in my little compost and then I will also put in uh, the mulch so I can keep some of the moisture in this. So that's basically what I'm doing for some of these pots. I've got I've got five or six of them. I might have another one somewhere. Um, but for me this really works out well and of course um, you'll still get a little bit of compaction in here in each season. I have to uh, I have to amend uh, a bit more, but as long as I just keep putting some really good nutrients in here as the plants are going, these, these beds are perfect for me. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, joining me again, uh, and I will see you soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, and the notification so you don't miss out uh, on some more content, uh, and happy gardening. See you soon.